gelijk hij zo. Hij is nu voor de laatste van februari maand het hij bij mij aangekomen, want hij was het meeste van die tijd naar weg van hij zat. Het is zo ziek hier aangekomen. Zo hij maar die kliniek erbij gewoon en einde juli het hij verwijs naar de hospitaal. Daar gekom hulle toetsen geneem op hom, die uitslaap van die toetsen. Daar was nog iets wat hulle oor getwijfel het. Het hulle drie specialiste sy help ingeroep om te vraag wat hulle nou gaan doen, want hy kan nie dier die scan gaan nie sy ruggers kom. En hulle toe besluit hulle maak oop. So het hulle die 4de september vir hom geopereer en my net weer toegemaak, sê hulle hulle kan vir hom uit stoen. Gelijk jy maar nie dood is heel te maal oor om. Ons bestraf die geest van die dood. Sê los die man uit in die naam van Jezus van Nazareth. Die die sy dag is. Om gezond te word. Elke kanker geest. Jou lichaam verlaat in die naam van die Jezus. Het leven terugkeer in jou lichaam nou. In die naam van Jezus van Nazareth. Jezus van Nazareth maak jou nou gezond. Die licht van Godse heerlijkheid. Elke kanker sel vrek. In jou bloed. In jou organe. opstandingskracht van die Heer Jesus Christus bring lewe aan die lichaam kom al Jesus van Nazareth maak jou nou gezond Heb jy pijn gehad? He? Wat lam. Kon nie so loop. Kon nie nie so loop nie. Hoe het hy hier aangekom? Het jy lom ingedra? Het jy lom ingedra? Oh! Oh! Hy was vir lam. Kon hy nie so loop nie. This man couldn't walk. They carried him inside this house today. Look at his body. Cancer ridden body. Now we walk from there. Let's just hear from his parents. They carried him in from the car to here and put him on this chair for a few minutes and then they had to put him on the floor. There is his little bed that they made for him. Wanneer laas het hy so geloop? Ek wil nou nie leens vertel nie, maar hy leen nou vir die laaste twee weke leen net so plat wat in die opstaan en sy bykie sit met die somme weet hartelijk. For two weeks, he's just been lying, and if he sit, he can only sit a while, then he's got to lie down again. And today the Lord Jesus Christ is setting free from cancer. This was the, the little bed that they made for him in the church, they carried him in there, the doctors opened him up, they just closed him and said he must go home to die. And that was in September. It's November. God kept him alive to bring him to this meeting. And today, he's going to gain strength in Jesus' name.
problems will cease. The headaches that's making you mad is going to stop tonight. The ringing in your head with your ears, is that true? God is going to set you free tonight. I see the headaches that's want to make you mad and your ears, and then lower back aches, that's tremendous. Is that true? Where's the pains you had? And now? Just try it now. Is the pain gone? All the way from Johannesburg. All the way from Johannesburg. God just showed me as I walked past it, the lower back aches, the constant headaches with the ringing in the head, and now it's all gone, never to come back again. In Jesus' name. a black t-shirt the man with a god's gonna heal your neck the pains that you get constantly in your neck is gonna be gone tonight the pains sometimes go down into your arms because of the nerves that are pinched god's healing you right now thank you jesus isn't it wonderful what an awesome God. Pain gone? Let's give God a shout of praise in the house. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's actually shot in this arm. And now? 1996. Uh, and the doctor done a reduction here. This arm was two inches shorter than this one. And where's the pain? That was restored the two inches. Yeah. I don't know where it came from. Yeah. So the doctor cut it. But uh, the pain is gone. And the pain is now gone. And your neck? Oh, I feel the headaches are moving. <laughs> what an awesome God! all the upsetness in your womb your ovaries your monthly thing is I mean you can't even try and say when it is and when it's not everything is upset and the pains in your legs the left one more than the right one but that is because of your back 
and you get it especially when you get up in the mornings it's more sore than in the evenings when you go to bed is that true yes that is true. but the greatest thing is the confusion in your head yes and it'll stop tonight in jesus name. Amen. Yes. Amen. i want you to just press there where's the pains you feel no pain all right It's very painful. Very painful. And the waist as well. Look at me. Jesus Christ is taking all the pain out of your body right now. Yes. And you will have to come. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 but the pain is leaving all the pain yes i believe yeah i know you believe your faith is very strong but that leg is you god is touching your breast as well god is healing a right breast as well <laughs> Now it's in the waist. <laughs> the waist is being healed right across the back. On the left. Going over to the right. Come, let's walk. <laughs> Broken leg. Healed in Jesus' name. And now God's healing that knee that you still concentrated on there it goes ah, yeah. it's you too and then and now what happened uh, what happened is it better now Huh? It's, better. it's much better. No, it's much better now.
Emmanuel. What does that mean? That means God is with and amongst us. What a greater message can you have but then God is with you. If God is with you, nothing can be against you. If God is for you, you don't have to fear. What can a man do unto you? If God is fighting for you, no demon in hell can stand against you. Emmanuel. That means God has come to dwell with His people to bring miracles and signs and wonders that you can, I mean, when John the Revelator was caught up in the Spirit, he heard these words, the tabernacle of God is now with man. That is Emmanuel. And if we can get a revelation of that, I mean, you're going to hear Scripture just today about the power that we've got to have signs we've got to have miracles and you we're going to take you at the end of the meeting you you're going to see how people walk through a pool of Bethesda that we have in our church and once a month people walk through this bath and astounding miracles happening I mean people get breakthroughs in their finances people really get out of wheelchairs blind eyes are really opening people are stirred in a way like they've never been stirred before so watch this broadcast Get your friends, phone them, and God is going to truly bless you. In Romans Jesus. chapter 8, it says, after all these years, if God is with you, who can be against you? Now, Rick Godwin says once, if God is against you, it doesn't matter who's with you. <laughs> 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 so let's draw a line there you plus God and on the other side you can have persecution perils nakedness sword hunger sickness demons devils mother-in-laws I mean if God is with you, who can be against you? So you don't need a lot of things. You only need God with you. On the other side of the line that is called against, you don't have to bother about the other side of the line. You have to bother about this side of the line that says, if God is with you. So the only thing you need to work at is, is God with you? Now, in the book of Isaiah chapter 7, there's a wonderful story there of God speaking to King Ahaz. And he said in verse 10, O king, ask God for a sign, and God will give you a sign. And the king said, I will never tempt God by asking signs. Drop down two verses. God says, but I will give you a sign. If you then want a sign or not, I'm going to give you a sign in any case because I am a God of signs and wonders and miracles. And I want my people to have signs, wonders and miracles. So Moses, I'm going to give you two signs. Isn't it funny that Moses went with the two signs to, 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 to Pharaoh and the signs were not for Pharaoh, it was for Israel? God had other plans with Egypt. He hardened Pharaoh's heart Pharaoh's heart to bring other signs but it boils down to whenever they refer back to the exodus out of Egypt he says with a mighty hand with an outstretched arm God led the children of Israel with signs with wonders and with miracles he said and I sent my spirit to be with them so God said the fact that I were with them was signs, wonders, miracles. So King Ahaz, don't you want a sign? No, I will not tempt God. How can you ask for signs? He says, oh king, I don't care anymore. I'm going to give you signs. But the sign that I will give you will be the following, oh king. Somebody will come into this planet and we will call him Emmanuel. Which means God is with us. When Jesus went to the Mount of Olives to say goodbye to the disciples, got them on the mountain, and he awfully rebuked them. 
That's on the mountain saying goodbye. He says, James, Peter, John, Thaddeus, Matthew, let's go to the mountain. I'm going. And he took them on our high mountain. He says, right, I'm just waiting for the cloud. I'm leaving any minute, but I just want to tell you before the clouds here. How would you like to work for your pastor three and a half years? You've done all you could. And he says, well, I'm leaving for America. I rebuke you. you. I'm going to... And he over rebuked them for their unbelief and the hardness of their hearts. And he said to them, go and preach the gospel in a rebuke. I've told you over and over, go preach. I've given you power over demons and devils. I've commanded you to preach the kingdom, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Now you're hanging around here. And I want to tell you, those that believe, they shall be saved. Those that believe not, they shall be damned. But for those that believe, these signs shall follow. He will cast out demons. They shall speak in other tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. They shall drink poison. They shall take up serpents. Nothing shall hurt them. And he departed and they went out everywhere, preached the word, and God confirmed the word with signs following. But Matthew writes it a little bit different. He says, and Jesus took them also on the mountain, and he said, go preach. Go teach. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? And lo, I am with you always. The sign will be Emmanuel. God is with you. And if God is with you, says Romans 8 verse 31, who can be against you? Nothing can separate you from him. Nothing can come against you. So you only have to have God with you. And if you get the revelation, the things that will then be against the against will be signs, wonders, miracles, power. In Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is poured out. And God said, if the Holy Spirit is poured out, you shall receive power and you shall be witnesses unto me. Is that true? Then the Holy Spirit was poured out, and when this was noised abroad, yet comes all the people rushing to Jerusalem. So Peter stood up and he preached, and he says, These are not drunken as you suppose, but this is that spoken by the prophet Joel in the last days. And then he goes on and on, and he jumps down to verse 22. He says, Listen, O house of Israel, Jesus Christ, a man accredited appointed listen don't miss one appointed shown forth and commended and attested by God by by God by the mighty works <laughs> wonders help me somebody wonders and signs which God worked through him how was he how was his credit so this is the CV of Jesus Christ but he's called Emmanuel God is with us but says verse 23 this Jesus you have delivered up to be crucified. Says verse 32, but this Jesus God raised up from the dead. <laughs> but this Jesus God raised up from the dead. And after receiving the promise of the Spirit from the Father, He has poured it out what you now see and what you now hear. Come on, people. So there's a seeing and a hearing of what? Of the glorious powers, the signs 
the wonders, the miracles of the living God. So if God is with you, it's got to be signs, wonders, miracles. And what's it about? It's about this Jesus who is called Emmanuel. His cousin grew up with him by the name of John the Baptist. They played together, ran together, worked together. And uh, all of a sudden, one day, John was baptizing. And he said, He whose shoelaces I am not worthy to untie is standing amongst you. So he didn't realize who Jesus really was at that time. He just got the revelation that, Hey, I sense Messiah's in the crowd. I sense the one that I am the voice of, crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight the path. I, I sense he's here. The one who shoelaces, he's, he's amongst you. So he baptized. And all of a sudden he stopped again. He said, oh my goodness, there is the Lamb of God that's taking away the sin of the world. So here comes Jesus. And he's baptized by John. And John writes and he says, on whom you see the Spirit descends, and stays and abides on him it is he so through the years the spirit came upon elijah the spirit came upon elisha the spirit came upon micah the spirit came upon Nahum. the spirit came upon upon obadiah the spirit came but left came and left but if you see the spirit come and don't leave again that is him okay so he says and i saw the heavens open and I heard a voice, and I saw the Spirit descending. I am the witness. I am the testimony. I saw how the dove came. I heard the voice saying, this is my beloved son. And I was there when it happened. Now he says, I must decrease so that he can now increase. I must now go to the background so that he can now come to the foreground, to the forefront. So they, so the authority says, that's easy. Let's just put you in prison. Then you're out of the way out completely. <laughs> so they put him in prison. Once in prison, now he starts thinking and meditating. Was it truly the Messiah that I baptized? I mean, it's my cousin, man. So John says, listen, man, I've heard a rumor. They're going to cut my head off tomorrow. There's some wicked oaks and his daughters and they just want to get rid of my head. He says, so I've got this problem now. Just say I die and it wasn't the Christ. Don't you just want to go and find out if he's really the one? So here comes the disciples, Matthew 11. Jesus, John sent us. Are you this Jesus? Now remember Acts 2, this Jesus you crucified, this Jesus God raised up, attested, accredited, appointed forth and now. Are you the one? Or must we still wait for another one? Jesus says, oh, uh, go tell John Isaiah 7 says, uh, a sign shall be given. Go tell John Isaiah 11 says, and on him the spirit of the Lord rests. Go tell John Isaiah 9 says, and he shall be called wonderful. No, no, he didn't say that. He didn't even refer to the book. He said, go tell John what you see. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead are being raised. Go tell John, signs, wonders, miracles are happening. And that will be the qualification of Emmanuel. Because I will, <laughs> come on, man. I will give you a sign. So go tell John, the deaf are now hearing, the blind are now seeing, the dead are being raised. They said, is that it? Yes. So they say, John, uh, we went to him, and when we asked him if he's the one, he said, just sit down. And then he called a cripple and said, walk. And then he called a blind and he said, see. And he called a deaf and he said, hear. And he said, go tell John about that. John said, that must be him. <laughs> must be him. So now comes the apostle Paul says if someone preaches another Christ then the one we have preached unto you that works signs have you received the spirit by obeying the law or by the hearing of faith Galatians 3 and he who works wonders amongst you does he do the wonders because you keep the law or because you believe 
that is Emmanuel. So Paul immediately refers to wonders when he refers to Christ. He says, now I just want to know this one thing. Why is it that you are so quickly drawn away to another gospel? What is the other gospel? The powerless one. Because people will have a form of godliness, but they will deny the power. If God is with you, don't you try and stand up against me. Can, can you see this? You see the, the top of that rock that's so high you can hardly see it? That's the beginning of his big toe. There's a message called the cross, the dividing line. On this side is darkness, on that side is light. Colossians says we've been translated from darkness to light. So on this side is the old things, on that side is the new things. If you are in Christ, the old things have gone and the new things have now come to being. If the Son has set you free by washing you in His blood, you are free indeed. So, if there is no past... And you want to go find out about the past. You've got to go back over the cross to find out what's on this side. Because on that side, God has got no, no records of this side. Because God says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 17 and 18, Of their sin and iniquity I will think no more. So God says, I've got no memory of this side. The only memory I've I got is when you cross the cross... You are a new creation. So if you want to deliver somebody by going into the past, you've got to go to Satan to get the information. So you're using the information of darkness to try and get somebody free in the kingdom of light. On this side, I'm sorry, there's no information of this. Show me the scripture that talks about the bloodline curse in the Bible after Christ died on the cross. But my Bible does say the following, that I have received the spirit of adoption, crying, Abba, Father. And now that I'm an heir of God, I'm a joint heir of Christ. And now I am translated into the family of God. And now God's my father, and I can't remember in his past that he ever had a curse in the darkness. Oh, but the sins of the forefathers to the third and the fourth generation. That's law. And Moses is dead. And if you want to read Moses, you've got a veil. But the rest of the scripture, if you want to be under the law, I'll still help you. It says of those that hate me. So even if you're under the law and you don't hate him, you still haven't got the curse. Because the curse is only for those that hate him. And if you don't hate him, you haven't got a curse. But if you've got a curse, you're under the law. If you're under grace, you can't have a curse. The only curse you get is if you preach another gospel. And the other gospel is the one that's got a form of godliness but denying the power. Because if he is Emmanuel, it means God is with us. If God is with us, it means signs and wonders are there. It's a man in the Old Testament, a judge of Israel by the name of Gideon, in Judges chapter 6. The Midianites burned down the fields of the Israelites and the corn that was left over was taken by Gideon and he put it in a wine press and the whole house of Israel fled into the mountains and they were hiding from the Midianites Gideon took his sword and he stood in front of the wine press and he said, let just one Midianite come this, to this. So the angel appeared unto him. Gideon! So Gideon said, what do, you want, what do you want? The angel said, God is with you, you mighty man of valor. He didn't say God wants to make you a mighty man of valor. He said, Israel is hiding. You're the only one that stood up. So you are a mighty man of valor, Gideon. So I want to tell you, Gideon, God is with you, man. He said, is that it? 
didn't move from his spot. He said, if God is with us, then where's the signs and the wonders? Say it again. If God is with you, then these signs shall follow you. So here comes the angel of the Lord. said, Gideon, God is with you. He said, no, 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 don't go away in a hurry. If God is with us, where's the signs and the wonders? Our fathers told us if God is with us, we'll have signs and wonders. Deuteronomy 32 and 34. Joshua chapter 4. Psalm 77 and Psalm 78. Let one generation tell the other generation about the great works of God to know that God was with them so that the next generation can put their hope in God again and say, oh God, do it again in our time. So Gideon says, if God is with us, there's got to be proof. Because now I'm protecting the wheat. Where's the miracles? He said, how will I do what you want me to do? How Benjaminites are not supposed to do what you tell me to do. I'm of a tribe that's not supposed to go in battle. Judah's supposed to go in battle. I'm not supposed to lead. Judah's supposed to go first. So why can you tell me to do it? He said, because you said, if God is with you, there must be signs. So he said, now go and God will be with you. <laughs> you can check it up. You can check it up. You can check it up. He says, I can't because I'm a Benjaminite. Judah's supposed to go first. He says, but you just said, if God is with you, there will be signs. He said, so Gideon, go, and God will be with you. Gideon said, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. You've got to prove it first. I've got this little fleece here. And I heard prophetically they will be asked to a king to ask a sign. And the king will say, no, I will not tempt God. God said, no, ask, asking signs is not temptations. I will give you a sign that God is with you. So if God is with me, and you now said it twice, then I want some proof. I'll leave it there tonight. I'm going to bed. And that thing must be wet tomorrow and the ground must be dry. Then I'll believe it. So I got up the next morning. I said, well, that's good. So Gideon, Go. And God will be with you. He said, no, 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 no. Not that quick. I've grown up and I've never seen the wonders. I've only heard about them. Give me another sign. Tomorrow, I want the ground wet and the fleas dry. No, but you can't tempt God. Who says you're tempting God? God delights in signs and wonders. God delights in signs and wonders. So he got up the next day and says, seems all right. God says, now you've tested me. Now I'm going to test you. You wanted to know if I'm with you? Now I'm going to prove that I'm with you. You see that 33,000 men you get? Take them down to the river Gideon. And only those that bend down and drink are the ones that you're going to take with you. So afterwards, Gideon said, my goodness, 300. So I'm going to send 32,700 home. He says, that's right. I want to prove to you that I'm with you. You wanted to see a sign? You'll see a sign. <laughs> you wanted to see a sign? I'll show you a sign. So Gideon, get up at that mountain. Give them torches and give them vessels of clay. Put the torches inside the vessels. Get the trumpets ready. When you give the sign, this is what the people will shout. The sword of Gideon and the sword of the Lord. If you and God is together and God is with you, who can be against you? So shout the sword of Gideon and the sword of the Lord and hit the vessels, let the light shine and confusion broke out in the camp and thousands upon thousands were destroyed. Because if God is with you, who can be against you? For the Lord would say, have I not promised that I will be with you. And if you can realize that I am with you, the greater works of the Christ you will be able to do. 
And tonight you can eat the bread and you can drink the wine. And you can come to a realization that truly, child, you are mine. And you can stand up and do the works that I said you will do. For didn't I promise I am Emmanuel? God is with you. So there's a new breed of people coming to the front. And I tell you, this is truth. This is my glory. And it'll break through. And if you've heard it, and if you've received it, then you will be able to do the works that I said you can do. So eat the bread and drink the wine. And realize, child, that all my power is now thine. You can speak a word and you can do it in my name. And the situation that you're addressing will never be the same. Things will change and things will turn round and about. And when people receive the miracle, they will break out in a victory shout. So get ready for the thing I'm ready to do. And realize I am Emmanuel. God is with you. Amen. Thank you, Father. I want you to just stand and, I mean, may, maybe you're not in this meeting, but stand close to your TV and make like you're going to go through this pool because I'm going to stretch out my hand and as people go through this pool every now and then my hand is going to be there and I'm going to say to you now it's your turn to be blessed see how people are touched by Almighty God see how uh, people really are healed by the miracle power of Jesus Christ so then it's your turn so see how people go through Mendrin di li bringing glubrugus to lubrumbos di di bre bagara de. It is true that you've prayed for the breakthrough. So tonight you will walk through the water. And you will experience that power, my son. You will experience it, my daughter. You will see, you will feel, you will know. The heavens above are open. The glory will not just come down, but it will flood your soul. And every member of your body will be touched and be made whole. And you will know people have been singing through the ages, the glory of the Lord is coming down. But they sung it, and now I say it, I want to visit the town. So get ready. Be ready. And receive from me. So that when you leave the house, other people will also see. That the hand of the Most High God is now upon you. And he is Emmanuel, and his works you will do. So stand up to your rightful place. It will not be like Moses that's asking, but I want to show you my face. Because it's looking into my face and seeing the glory that you will be transformed. And before many days, into the image of the Son of God, you will be conformed. Miracles, signs and wonders will flow like wine. Because of this blood, you are called mine. So receive, receive, drink it all in. And praise us and worship by the end of the day. You will just sing and sing and sing. Thank you, Jesus.
Right. Did you enjoy that? Now it's your turn. Put your hand there, man. Bless you in Jesus' name. God bless my brother. Bless my sister. Heal this man. Heal this woman. It's you again. Come on, put your hand there and make like you in this meeting with us. And God is touching you. God is blessing you. Another miracle for you. Be blessed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Did you enjoy that? Wasn't that awesome? Man, you must come and join us one Saturday. Every last Saturday of the month, people walk through this pool. And I tell you, they're exceeding the number of thousand in a little town called Stillfontaine in the Northwest. That in itself is a miracle. Come and join us. But right now, put your hand there. Father, let this person be healed. Let cancers dry up. Let sugar diabetes go. Let crippling arthritis disappear. Let deaf ears be unstopped. Let blind eyes be open. I say to you, be blessed, be healed. Have the peace of God that passes all understanding. May you have a glorious week in Jesus' name. Amen.